Up to this point, we've been looking at long-form performances you've been hired for. It's worthwhile considering four modes of getting paid for your services by working on your own. Appearing free with permission at a sponsored event and selling balloons or face painting for a fixed price. Appearing free with permission at a sponsored event and offering balloons, face painting, or entertainment for tips. Performing for tips in a public place without sponsorship and selling goods in a public place by pitching them to passers-by. The first two ways, the sponsored ways, give you one very essential thing, permission to be there. When you're working without sponsorship, you find very quickly that street performers are looked on as vagabonds pretty much everywhere. Some jurisdictions have no official policy on street performing, but police have a tendency to be suspicious and chase you away. Other jurisdictions license street performers and regulate where and when you can perform. But in all of these cases, your income will depend on the mood of the crowd and your skill at managing their attention and stimulating their generosity. Now, you may or may not match the typical street performer profile. A very young person able to live for very little money in informal circumstances, but you may be comfortable adding busking to your repertoire if you can live with not getting rich that way, but being able to make a few dollars through careful planning, good business practice, and the ability to find a niche where the authorities find you useful. Now you're probably never going to make a grown-up living this way. But if you're young and energetic, you can make a few dollars on days you'd otherwise be making none. There's good information on the internet in many places. The good place to start is the Magic Cafe Forum. Appearing under the umbrella of a fair or other organized event solves a number of the biggest problems. It gives you a guaranteed crowd, permission to be there doing your thing, and permission to solicit money for doing it. You might offer to appear free at a school or church fair or a fundraising event under the auspices of a local charity or civic organization and split your proceeds with the charity. Imagine at a large charity event like a run to combat cancer, you could even charge a premium price for your services because part of your proceeds will benefit the cause. You'll have to let the public know that their dollars will help the charity, but you don't have to publish your exact percentage agreement. Now, folks, I'm donating my time and effort to this wonderful cause in the hope that you'll be generous with your support. Part of every dollar you spend here will go to help fight cancer. You might pay a fee for a table at a flea market or farmer's market and vend your services there. You can paint faces and charge per face. You can twist balloons and charge per figure. Be sure to flash your table with several large bright balloon creations. You might request written permission to appear on your own in a public place where there are plenty of people. And the best guarantee of a crowd is at a local public celebration or fair. I emphasize written permission. There's always somebody at the site who doesn't think you belong there. You have to be able to show proof that you do. Your selling point to the event sponsors is that you're providing free entertainment and you only want to be able to accept tips to offset your expenses. The Tommy Myers Balloon Company has a great line of balloon supplies and a wide variety of buttons and signs that put across gently but effectively that you expect money for your efforts. If you want to actually sell items, be sure your written permission specifies that you can. Let's add a fourth strategy to the first three. Pitching. That means gathering crowds with a quick show and selling them what you've just been demonstrating. Balloon artists can demonstrate their art and sell bags of 10 or 15 260 A's with a printed instruction sheet as balloon animal kits. Magicians for many years have been known to gather a crowd, 
do two or three tricks and sell Svengali decks from Robins, or little magic kits made up of two-card Montes and the like, also from Robins. When you perform in that mode, it helps to stay very compact, working from an apron or the big pockets of a vest. A typical magic show for a Svengali deck pitch will consist solely of the several effects even a beginner can do with Svengali deck. An excellent Tommy Windsor pitch script is available for a couple of dollars from Lee Jacobs. Whatever your strategy, here are some things to remember. You must actively gather a crowd. Don't expect your incredible skill to interest them. You must entertain and constantly tell them to be interested. That will require real expertise at those crowd communication skills we talked about. You may be making a balloon or painting a face for just one person at a time, but make that balloon or face the center of group entertainment. Narrate, tell stories or jokes, keep them interested. Everybody wave goodbye to him again. Wave goodbye. And a rabbit tummy, and rabbit back feet, and a rabbit tail, and we'll go hippity hop, hippity hop, hippity hop to you. There you go. The cuteness of the child being served will work to your advantage. Be clever, be eye catching. You have to make yourself extraordinary if you expect anyone to pause in the experience they came for to stop and watch you. Take special care in choosing your location. You need to be visible and in the way if possible. People have to come to your way naturally. Experienced buskers say that finding a good pitch, a busker calls his location his pitch, is the hardest thing to do and be sure to have your contract or whatever it takes to prove you have a right to be there in your pocket with you. There's always someone who's ready to challenge you regardless of what you say you've agreed to and paid for. Suggestions from experienced street performers differ on these points. In fact, they're often quite contradictory, but I believe it's best to charge a set amount. Ask for the amount you want, or you'll get a token few pennies. See if you can get mom and dad to buy a balloon for each one of the kiddies in the family. But remember, mom or dad needs to be there. Kids don't generally have a lot of money.